A week ago I put out a video on this subject which became my most popular video yet. Since then more information and clarification has come to light. This video both updates and replaces the previous one. I've encountered a lot of purposeful disinformation and confusion. Add to that a complete mainstream media news blackout and I realized a good video presenting the known facts would be useful. I have no insider information or secret sources. The information presented in this video is freely found on other YouTube videos or on websites accessible by everyone and is compiled here to allow you to make your own judgment. Where possible a link is provided in the more info section. Some clips are cut, usually roughly as I'm no audio video expert, for time constraints, but no cuts were made to manipulate information. By now many of us have heard about the new outbreak in Ukraine which has infected 1.6 million, hospitalized 150,000 and killed almost 400 people in just three weeks. This is a screenshot of the most recent flu tracker data showing Ukraine on the right with accounts so high it doesn't even fit in the bubble and dwarfing the counts of any other country in the region. Poland and Belarus above and to the left of Ukraine are now reporting similar cases leading many to believe the new outbreak is spreading through Europe. China and Italy are also reporting what appears to be the new strain. On August 17th, Dr. A. True Ott was a guest of Dr. Bill Deagle on the Dr. Deagle Show. He said that a man named Joseph Moshe had called in to his Born on the 4th of July RBN radio show on August 11th. The purpose of the show that day had been to compile evidence of the source of the H1N1 strain. He claimed Moshe told him he was a microbiologist from Los Angeles and had evidence that a biological weapon was being developed by Baxter Laboratories in Ukraine. He said he had documents proving an outbreak of a mutated H1N1 strain would be precipitated at the end of October under the guise of a flu vaccine. He also said the vaccine contained an additive that weakened the immune system. At first he didn't think Moshe was legit, but the next day's events made him rethink that assumption. Moshe, a 56 or 70 year old, more on that later, American microbiologist with dual citizenship in Israel, seems to have felt guilty and unable to keep the evidence a secret any longer. The day after he called the radio show, agents knocked on the door of his house. When he didn't answer, they set up surveillance and questioned his neighbors. The next morning, August 13th, Moshe got into his 2002 Volkswagen Beetle and headed for the Israeli embassy where he believed he'd be safe. He was followed by a helicopter and cars from multiple government agencies. Before he could arrive at the embassy, his car was blocked in by armored Humvees, dozens of police and FBI agents, canine units, a SWAT team, snipers, and the Secret Service. His car was hit by an EMP pulse, which knocked out the transmission and his mobile devices. They then sprayed tear gas and pepper spray into the car. Moshe, who had worked for Mossad, the intelligence agency of Israel, had been trained to build up resistance to tear gas and managed to stay inside the car with the documents. A microwave weapon may have burned his skin and a robot was used to remotely break the windows. Moshe was then tasered and dragged from the car at gunpoint several hours after the standoff began. The mainstream media immediately reported Moshe was a mentally ill conspiracy theorist criminal who had called in a threat to blow up the White House. According to Moshe's 90-year-old mother Julia from nearby Beverly Hills, he may have taken an antidepressant, but he had no history of aggression or psychosis. He certainly doesn't appear to have ties to conspiracy theory groups, any significant criminal record, and there's no proof he made threats against the White House. The media has since gone completely silent about this event, which was dubbed the Westwood standoff. Moshe hasn't been heard from since. Here's some footage of the standoff. These are aerial photos of Westwood right now where a police standoff is going on. It's happening in the parking lot of the federal building on Wilshire Boulevard. Inside that red VW is a man who is wanted by the U.S. Secret Service for making unspecified threats against the White House. Right around 10 o'clock this morning in the Westchester area, this suspect was spotted. Now, we know that the suspect was wanted for two misdemeanor warrants. We're not sure what led to the high-speed chase. Now, the high-speed pursuit went through the west side of Los Angeles. It was on the 405 for a time being. And then, as we understand, there was a second passenger in that red Volkswagen. That second passenger bailed out of the car right there around Howard Hughes' uh, the Howard Hughes exit right there off of Sepulveda and the 405 freeway. But then the high-speed pursuit continued, and that's 
where the suspect, or the, here is where the suspect rather headed towards. You're near the command post where they're trying to figure out what exactly to do. Now we're going to talk to Lieutenant Rooney. Can you tell us kind of a, what is the newest information you have on exactly who this guy is? Well, I don't have his name, to be honest with you. Uh, and as far as the, the steps that are being taken here, has he made any specific threats that he has something in the car? Is this more of a sa better safe than sorry type of approach to what he's doing? I would certainly say that it's a better safe than sorry. What do you, what kind of threat do you think he poses at, at this point? Do you think there is anything? Has he given you any signal that he has something, any kind of weapon or any kind of, of bomb in the car? I won't go into that. Before we let you go, too, there's one thing I wanted to try to get some more information on. We had heard something about a second person that may have run off from this car. Is that, is there any truth to that? No, no I can, I can say that there was no second person involved in the vehicle. Notice the media mentioning a second passenger and the LAPD denying it. Considering the number of helicopters and cameras on the car, if someone had bailed from the car, it should have been seen and probably filmed. We have Bill Thomas over the scene now over the suspect's home. Bill, what can you tell us? Yeah, we got local office here, FBI, federal officers as well. It looks like a canine unit. Police dogs being brought in here to check out this home. This is the 8100, maybe the 8300 block, Creighton Avenue on the west side in Westchester. There's the home of the detached garage watching police officers go through apparently some trash buckets and back, checking out the inside and the uh, exterior of the house. This has been going on for several hours, as you mentioned, Mark. Here's a Google Maps Street View screenshot showing the same house at the location 8311 Creighton Avenue. A white page's lookup shows Joseph Moshe lives at that address. Here's some raw news footage of the capture, taken from a helicopter. Here he is, here he is, look right here. Jeez, look at that. There it goes. Oh, beautiful. More, more coming in. Tased him. Tased him. Yep. Oh, man. You guys couldn't have done this a half hour ago. Let's reposition, if necessary, Johnny, to get the best picture if it goes that way. Just to take the whatever you need to do. And moved in. Perfect timing. Uh, I don't know. Looking down at the angle, I guess. How did he survive all that tear gas? Unfortunately, Moshe's call to Dr. True Ott wasn't recorded.